Hey everybody, this is Jason, Zombie Collector. And you might be noticing something here in my hand. And this is a new series I'm going to start right now. I am titling it Sake and Slabs. So I wanted to take us on a journey as we learn about sake, the ins and outs, the different varieties and kinds, um, and a little bit maybe even about Japan to a certain degree, but also going to be about slabs. I've been stockpiling slabs for about a month and a half, two months, maybe even more. I've hinted about this on my old school live videos, uh, sometimes in some of the other videos. I've mentioned it to a few of my friends that I was going to be doing something along those lines. Well, today's the day, guys. I finally decided to do it. I got some downtime. I was able to acquire some sake. I'm going to go and pick different varieties up as we go. But the first one is kind of a nice introductory one. So I wanted to start off with that. So I can't promise these videos are going to be short and sweet. Uh, but I promise they shouldn't be super long either. The first one might be a little longer than normal because I kind of want to go over just a little bit of the setup. And that way I won't be doing this on every video. But the first uh, one up we have is called snow beauty snow beauty and as you see here at the bottom it is the white you have like the rice at the bottom that is in this uh sake now the sake for people who want to know is called nigori sake it's okuro matsu hakushika shake well and served chilled so as you can see it's kind of sweating a bit because i have put it in the freezer to make it nice and chilled so i am shaking it and so a lot of times people might want to know like how one drinks sake so if you go to a restaurant or if you go to you know like a fancy uh hotel or somebody at, you go to a house and they want to do it something up nice they will a lot of times have warm or chilled depending on the sake sometimes it's served at room temperature in these kind of vessels like this i'm sure you've seen this if you go to a any kind of hibachi grill or any Japanese restaurant, you'll see them like this. There's all kind of variations and styles. I have two right here. Here's another one. I have, but all these are from Japan. So here you have the couple of vessels. You can, you will pour the, from the bottle into this. And then, like I said, chill it or warm it up. And then, um, and then you serve it. Now, you have different variations. Now, this is not really a sake glass, though. I do see Japanese people use this. This is more like a beer glass in Japan, uh, but I do like to show this off because for us, you know, even though it's quite, uh, this is like a normal glass for us, maybe for some hard liquor, but in Japan, this is like a beer cup. For this is Asahi Super Dry. And then this is what you see most of the time people drink sake in, which I will be doing the same. A very small, uh, just cup. And you just fill it up. You can fill it very to the top, which I won't be doing because I don't want to make a mess. But t typically, you fill it up to the top. And even if it spills over, it's okay. It means good luck or good tidings or good fortune. So if it spills over and no one freaks out, like here we be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't be pouring all my beer all over the table, all my whiskey or bourbon. But over there, it's like it's like a good thing. So a lot of times, they will pour over, overflow your, your uh, cup. And then last, but certainly not least, one of the most unique ways to drink sake are in these type of squared containers. So you have this here, but you can see there, this is uh, says Nihon here, I believe, but there you have it, and same thing, you fill it up. I won't drink that because I can't become messy and I'm not a professional, I'll drink that off camera. So there you have it, guys. So I just wanted to show you a few of the uh, apparatuses that one would use to uh, drink sake in. So here I'm gonna go ahead and get right into it. We're gonna crack this open. First time. Okay. I'm gonna pour it in there. All right. So let's take a gander. I'm not, actually I can't pour it, show it to you, but just trust me. It's not the most appealing color if you know what I mean. Mmm, yes. Oishi. Kanpai. Kanpai. Minasan. 
I'm about to criticize your YouTube community. Come back. All right. So now let's get on to the slab. You didn't come here to watch me drink sake only, though that might be a fun experience. I'm moving all the stuff out of the way so there cannot be any accidents because, you know, drinking sake. So the first step is my first one I want to show you all. I'm going to read this real quick, and then I'm going to show you the card. These cards were distributed as a Mariners game on, game on, or these were distributed, sorry, at a Mariners game on July 15th. It is said that only 20,000 packs were created of 21 different cards and seven duplicates were passed out to fans. This set contains the very first of Keebler's Ichiro cards. What a coincidence. We're talking about sake, we're talking about slabs, and when we have a... 10, a Beckett Jim Mint 10 of Ichiro Suzuki on the Keebler card. Now, this is his from his rookie year, so this is technically a rookie card. Now, it's not necessarily a rookie card in the sense of it's a rookie card um, that would be counted as a rookie. It is a rookie card to me. So, I wanted to show this right here. It says Ichiro Suzuki, outfielder number 51. Born October 22nd, 1973. His birthplace is uh, Kasugi, Achi Prefecture, Japan. He resides in Kobe, Japan. Bats left, throws right. Height 5'9", weighs 160. He signed through 2003, and he signed as an agent on November 18th, 2000. And there you go. You can see the back. So I try to straighten it up a bit so it doesn't shake too much. Shake, rattle, and row. But there you go. There is the Ichiro Suzuki keyboard card. I just love this card. I couldn't believe I got it. I think I believe I picked the card up for a dollar. You know, um, as you see, the corners are kind of janked up. They're not four sharp corners. I can't believe they gave it a 10, even though the corners are not uh, crisp. But, you know, it is what it is. So you have that. Hopefully, that is a one that maybe you didn't know much about. And if you did, just pretend like you didn't know so we can uh, be both, we all can be happy. That would be uh, beneficial if you know what I mean. All right. So, next up, guys, I had to, I was pulling up the next one up. So I just want to do a little bit of talking because, you know, I want these videos to be a little different than my normal, my normal videos because at the end of the day, a lot of us, including myself, sometimes will just, you know, we'll talk about the cards, but we won't really give a lot of insight. At least I don't. I'll just talk about my experience and how much fun I had with these players and whatnot, but I only talk about specifics on the card. So with these slabs, with my sake and slabs, let me take another sip. You know, I'm getting parched. Um, I want to do a little something different. So I want to do a little bit more detailed, a little bit more, you know, digging a little bit deeper. Uh, so that's the reason why I decided to go this route. So the last one I'm going to do is also... Um, Ichiro, shockingly. And let me read a little bit about that for you guys. It says here, This set was issued by Upper Deck to commemorate both the sensational rookie season of Ichiro Suzuki and the signing of Suzuki to the Upper Deck Spokesman contract. Cards number I-1 through I-20 are regular cards, while I-21 through I-25 are milestone cards. The set was issued in a box which contained all 25 cards as well as a special bonus jumbo card. So with no further ado, this is I-25. And this is a also Beckett 9 of the milestone card. And here I'm gonna read it to you guys. So I'm gonna get a little I'm gonna get it a little closer here so you can see. I'm gonna try to read from here. Each row became the Mariners single season hits leader on September 8th, 2001 when he collected his 217th hit of the season, a home run in the third inning against the Orioles. Each row passed Alex Rodriguez, who had 216 hits in 1996. The Mariners became the first team to draw 3 million fans in 2001 with a sellout crowd of 45,894. So that's pretty cool. Let me show the back. I love these cards. I actually own the set, I think. 
it's somewhere. I couldn't find it because I want to kind of show off the box. I'll end up having to buy it again or, or find it or whatever. It might be at my folks' house. Because back in 2001, I was still living down in southern Indiana. So I have a lot of my Ichiro stuff down there still. So there is this card right here, guys. Another Ichiro card. I'm trying to keep the glare away. This is a um, 9. So it is a near mint or better. And it is the, uh, uh, it's a I-25. So it's the last one in the set uh, of these cards. So there's those two guys. So hopefully you enjoy that. This is a couple things I kind of want to give you a heads up on. Uh, sometimes the sake will be the same sake, you know, which is fine because it's, I'm the one drinking it, really. Mazel tov. Um, but also, it's not going to be just Japanese card uh, slabs. It'll be just whoever I find and I want to collect. I just thought I'd start out with a Japanese um, contingent since it's going to be sakes from Japan. So I thought, why? No better person to show off first is Ichiro. I have a whole stack of slabs right here to my left. And so I will be definitely doing more videos of this. But I kind of want to do this introductory video <clears throat> to say, <clears throat> excuse me, because I'm just getting so emotional. Maybe I need some more sake. Maybe that's what it is. So let's pour a little bit more sake into the cup. Whoa, see, almost dropped it. Kampai. Now you can shoot this, but I got to work tomorrow, so I can't be shooting sake and then I'll be all janked up the next day. So I can't be doing that. I keep it classy. I'm a classy individual. So anyways, I was just saying, this is not only going to be about Japanese cards. It could be any slabs, but it will be a new series I do. That's going to be a little bit different than what I normally have done in the past. I want to take it a little bit more serious, a little bit more showing off the cards and the slabs. Because I think, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I want to have a little bit of variety for people. A lot of people will come as normal just to do my show off cards. I get up card shows and shops or whatever I pick up on eBay, and that's not going to change. But, you know, I'm starting to do that uh, Jason Handy, Deep Thoughts, which has been getting a lot of um, interest, which I appreciate. But I thought this would be a nice little thing to introduce as well. Along with my uh, Top 80 cards from the 1980s, that hasn't changed. I still have that. So I feel like I have a couple things going for me here. But anyways, with that being said, I just wanted to try to show off those cards, show off a little bit of what I'm planning on doing moving forward. Um... Let me get this off of here. This, there we go. There we go. Keeping it classy with the sake. And uh, let me know what you think, guys, uh, below. Let me know. Give me your uh, constructive criticism. I can handle it. I'm a big boy. What do you think about this idea? You think there's room for improvement? What do you think I should do differently? Do you think I, I'm, you know, I'm doing fine? What's your thoughts? Um, anyways, maybe some suggestions. If you're a sake connoisseur yourself, I'm talking to you, Phil. Maybe you might have some ideas of sake that I could I could be trying. Because I like sake. I've had sake for years here and in Japan. But, you know, like I said, a lot of times I just go through and just pick out a couple different variations and just see what I like. I just like trying different stuff. So, you know. But if you have any suggestions, I'm up for it. So that being said, guys. Domo arigato gozaimashita. Sumimasen. Arigato. Kanpai. And I will see you next time. Jamata. Matane. Bye-bye.